Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Annie Jehuna, a lay reader at the ACK St. Joseph of Parimavea, Diocese of Nairobi. Welcome to our today's devotion. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, which is a light unto our feet. May the Holy Spirit give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray and believe. Amen. Today, we are going to learn that Jesus will calm the storm. That is the theme. And we are going to read from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, and I read. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stand, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. When we look at this text, we see that Jesus is the one who initiated the trip across the sea. And verse 35 tells us about this command. He told the disciples, Let us go to the other side. I want you to realize that this was after a hard day's work and evening came. This really teaches us about obedience to God's command, regardless of time or convenience. Because sometimes when you are called out to serve or to do something, we would like to give excuses. And the disciples had every reason to do so, but they didn't. May the Lord help us to be obedient to his word and to other instructions that currently we are being given by the government. In verse 36, we see that they left the crowd behind and took Jesus with them. This is a lesson that there comes a time in our life that we really need to leave the crowd and spend quality time with God in prayer and meditating upon his word. I know with the current COVID crisis and with the social distance we are connected through the internet. And I'm sure you can bear with me that the internet is so crowded with all sorts of information, which could easily actually distract us and make us lose focus. Because of this crowd and the negative reports that we might fail to hear God's voice and miss the noise, resulting in fear and grumbling and complaining. So we are really called to leave the crowd at this particular moment and spend quality time with God. In verse 36 b from this verse we see there were other boats, but it was only this one which had Jesus in it. This makes this boat very significant, because the other boats, we are not told that they had Jesus with them. It was only this one boat. Let me pose a question here. Do you have Jesus in your boat? What makes your boat significant? In verse 37, while they were on their way, a furious storm broke out. Maybe we can flash back to the beginning of this year in January, when we ushered in the new year. We were all in very high spirits. We were celebrating, wishing each other a happy and prosperous new year. We even made new year resolutions and calendar of events were made. And all plan seems right on course. But little did we know that two months down the lane, a fear storm would break in the whole world called COVID-19. Our daily lives will be distracted and the things that we would normally be doing will no longer be normal. In this text, 
the disciples started off on the same note. They needed rest and must have been very happy recounting the day's events and even sharing how privileged they were to be with Jesus and maybe the miracles that Jesus had performed during the course of the day, but only to encounter a terrible storm. In verse 38, the disciples who are seasoned fishermen could not handle this storm, which was almost drowning them. It was beyond their control. They were fearful and they panicked. They were in familiar grounds, but the challenge was very unfamiliar. Their experience and expertise could not help them. They must have struggled to get out of the situation until they called on Jesus. This brings to mind that no matter how skillful or wise we think we are, we need God in our lives at all times because challenges are bound to happen anytime and anywhere. May the Lord help us that we always have Christ with us. In verse 38b, they remembered Jesus was with them in the boat. So they went and woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? You realize that all this time, Jesus was in the boat until when they called upon him. He already knew the problem and the solution. Because when he woke up, he didn't start asking them what was the problem. He straight away took action. As a people of God, we need to call upon the name of the Lord and intercede for our families, churches, nation, and the world at large. This is the time to keep watch like never before, especially now with the social distancing whereby we can utilize that time to seek the face of God. We can also reflect on the lessons that we are learning through the current pandemic or any other challenge that we are facing. It is also a good opportunity to listen and hear what the Lord is telling us. May the Lord help us to use this time wisely. The question they asked Jesus, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? This was out of panic. They were fearful. They were in a state of hopelessness and desperation. And I'm sure we are all in that situation right now. Sometimes you also do the same when desperate for solutions or when we constantly commit issues in prayer. And many times we remain asking ourselves, where is God in all this? Because sometimes the situations that we are interceding for become worse and worse. We result in complaining in prayer and wondering, where is God in all this? From this scripture, the disciples would soon learn that Jesus cared because he wanted the best for them. He was in their boat and there was no way they would have perished. In verse 39, Jesus responded beyond what they would have thought or imagined. He rebuked the wind and the waves with just three words. Quiet, be still. And the wind died down and it was completely calm. This must have been such a relief after such an ordeal. The disciples had underestimated Jesus' power and they had seen him perform many miracles before. What about us? When we are in a challenge, do we really wonder whether God cares for us? And with the current crisis, are we doing the same? Are we underestimating the power of God? Maybe by our actions or even our own words. Remember, God's power is applicable to all sorts of situations. No storm is beyond his control. In verse 40, Jesus takes this opportunity to teach them about fear and faith and to shift their mind from the challenge and focus on Christ. He asks them, do you still have no faith? This question applies to us today as we battle the storms of life. The word still here indicates that after being with Jesus all this time, it was expected that their faith had grown. What about us today? What would Jesus say about 
our faith after all the things that he has done for us. As we battle the current storms of life, where is your focus? Where is my focus? May the Lord help us to focus on him. Because the more we focus on him, the situations that are currently challenging us, they will seem dim and completely. And verse 41, the refocusing worked well. The disciples had a mind shift. And they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This teaches us that when Jesus comes, all the storms that we are currently going through, the whole world will know that he is the creator and the sustainer of the universe. These creations, they all bow down to his command. Let us never forget that Jesus is in the midst of the current storm. Let him into your boat in faith, because for sure he will bring it to an end. He is the only one who has the power to tell the waves. With just three words, quiet, be still. Remember, Jesus will come the storm. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for giving us an opportunity to share your word and how we thank you because you have given us a message of hope that no matter the challenge, you are the master of the storm. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.